someone takes a group photo and you take the photo to look at it, who do you zoom into first? Who do you zoom into first? Yourself. <laughs> you look at yourself. You take a group photo, your mother, father, friends, everybody, and we zoom into ourselves. Because naturally we think about ourselves. When we look at our parents, we shouldn't be thinking about what is my right? What should my parents be doing for me? I should be thinking about what should I be doing for them? And similarly with couples, husband and wife. Don't think about what my husband has to be doing for me. And the, wife, and the husband should be thinking, what is my wife supposed to be doing for me? It should be the opposite. What should the husband do to his wife? And the wife should be thinking, what are her duties towards her husband? And I guarantee love and compassion to increase then. Between the parents, you should be thinking about what should you be doing for them? Because Allah will ask you about them, not the other way around. And He will not be asking you, did your parents fulfill their duty towards you? No. He'll be asking you, did you fulfill your duty towards them? Brothers and sisters in Islam, I want to talk about the young ones who are under 40 years old. Your duty towards your parents does not stop at you merely calling them or saying Assalamu Alaikum to them. Our duty towards our parents must be one of humbleness, of dhul. For Allah said, وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذل, And lower the wing of humility like the bird when it is afraid of the eagle or the falcon. The mother comes and it encompasses its children with its, with its wings and lowers its head trying to hide. The person should be humbled out of respect for their parents. They don't raise their voice over their voice. They don't stamp their feet. I'm going to talk to the younger ones now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ Don't even say to your parents the simple sound of uff. You know, if Ibn Abbas says, if, if there was a slighter word, a more uh, subtle word, a smaller word than uff, Allah would have mentioned it. But the least that a person can, yani, the least word a person can say in this respect to the parents is uff, blowing a bit of air out of their mouth. You know, when a, Father says, son, can you take the rubbish out? They go, Phew. you're upstairs. Mother says, yeah, Bilal, Phew. what now? They're talking to themselves. Phew. You know, going like this, oh, that's bigger than oof. That is disobedience to the parents. Sometimes we're at the dinner table. Mum says, Fatima, she just says her name. She's drinking and then she slams the cup on the table. This is bigger than oof. Ya Muhammad, can you go and help your sister? Oh, why me? Stamping the feet is very common, isn't it? Young ones, do you know what I'm talking about? Sometimes they slam the door. Oh. Mum and dad come along and say, what are you doing son? So I didn't do anything, I didn't do anything to you, I just slammed the door. Be careful, <laughs> these children subhanAllah. They know how to wiggle their way out of things. Sometimes they say, why don't you tell my sister? Why doesn't so and so do it? This is all disobedience and defiance to the parents. There are angels writing these things. Listen to what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. He said, burru aba'akum taburrukum abna'ukum. Be dutiful towards your parents. As a result, your children will be dutiful towards you. This is a two-sided thing, brothers and sisters. I want you to analyze it. If you want your children to respect you, to be good to you, to look after you when you are weak, when you are feeble, when you become very old in age, when you can't walk, when you need someone to feed you with a spoon, when you need someone to take you to the toilet, when you need someone to bathe you, when you need someone to carry you, when you need someone to hold your hand and to treat you the same way you treated them when they were babies, infants, then they need to see from you the respect and the goodness from you towards your parents. When they visit their grandparents, they need to see how you treat your parents. They need to see how you talk to your parents. You know, there is a saying that says, we always complain that our children don't obey us. Am I right or wrong? They don't listen to us but they never fail to imitate us. Correct? Wallahi, they imitate the way you tie your shoelace. I don't see too many shoelaces here in the Emirates, but back when we have lots of shoelaces. They see the way you tie your shoelace. They see the way you look at the mirror. 
If you brush your teeth, they'll brush their teeth. If you wash your hands, they'll wash their hands. If you don't, they don't. When the husband and wife argue, the children will grow up arguing. If you make promises and don't fulfill them, they will also do the same. They don't fail to imitate us. So when you are dutiful to your parents, they will be dutiful towards you. If you don't have contact with your parents, your children will grow up learning this. See, when I got married, I mean all of us, when you get married and you have a problem in your marriage and you look at your wife or your husband and there's this situation you've never encountered before. Where do you get your example from? I mean, where do you recall? Who do you think of to try and solve this problem? The only place you can think of are your parents. You think how my father used to deal with it, how my mother used to deal with it, and so you apply it. So we are role models, my dear brothers and sisters. Role models. I made a survey before I came here uh, at the school which I teach in. And honestly, I was about to do a workshop about uh, parenting and uh, the children with their parents and uh, wanting the parents and the children to actually talk to each other and, and, and uh, have a dialogue. So I went and did a survey and I asked the year sevens, the year eights, year nines and year tens, how do you find the treatment between you and your parents? What would you like to see in your parents towards you? And the number one <laughs> aspect they talk about and these are children from different backgrounds, you know, Fijian, Indian, Pakistani, Lebanese, uh, 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 Emiratis, uh, uh, Moroccan, Egyptian, Australian, everything, you name it. They said the number one factor is that we wish our parents would not overreact when we tell them something. So I said, so who of you are able to talk to their parents about their secrets? Not many of the students put their hands up. Why? Who would you go to? They go, well, so we'll go to the internet. We ask our friends. I said, so when you, when you reach puberty, who of you are capable to talk to their mother and father about puberty? I can see some people smiling here because they're a bit embarrassed. My brothers and sisters, you need to establish a trust with your children in order for them to look after you later on. You need, if you want to raise them well, you need to also be that role model where you have a good relationship, an excellent relationship with them. So, I studied and analyzed this. Another thing which they said was, they said, I wish my parents would not yell when they're advising me something, because all I hear is screaming. I don't get the message. You need to be able to get the message across. So the next time they shout and yell, analyze. Talk with your wife, talk with your husband. Is that the way you talk to each other? Is that the way you talk to them, your children? I mean, Rasulullah he raised children. He raised children that were his own and were not his own. Among them was Anas, Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. He was about 10 years old. And one day Rasulullah sent him on an errand, something to do. And he took long. So Rasulullah went out to look for him. When he reached Anas, you know where he found him? He found him watching a group of young boys and girls playing outside. Little children. And he was just fascinated. Anas, young 10 year old, looking at the children playing with the rocks and the sand and all of that. And then Rasulullah said, Ya Anas! Anas looked back and saw Rasulullah Now I want you to imagine what our children would do if they were in that situation. And you as the parent, the mother or father, sees their child, you've sent them to do something, and they saw the television and they're watching, you know, Bugs Bunny. Or they're watching some other cartoon. How would you react? And how would your child react? This is how you can tell whether you are bringing them up right, or whether there is a good relationship, or whether you are being a good role model. Rasulullah said, Ya Anas! Anas looked back, and Anas was calm, peaceful, guilty, but not afraid. You know why? Because Rasulullah was laughing. He said, Ya Anas, <laughs> what happened? Anas realized that Rasulullah is happy that he likes to play. Anas realized that Rasulullah has this interaction with children. He, if he was a child, he'd like to play too. Anas knew that Rasulullah is expecting that Anas is a child, he likes to play. He said, I forgot Ya Rasulullah. 
And he said, go and do it and then come back and play, yeah, Anas. He gave him a little pat on the head. Anas went and did what he had to do, came back and played. Easy, simple, what would we do? Huh? <laughs> what are you doing? How many times do I have to tell you? I don't, that's it for me, you've got to talk to your dad. When he comes home, he will deal with it. Mother now takes it off her back. She's yelled, screamed, shouted. As children would say back in Australia, chuck the fit. <laughs> that's what we say. She went overboard. Father comes. Mother starts to complain. Your son, your daughter, your son, your daughter. I've told them a million times. It's time to brush their teeth. It's time to do that. And they keep going here and there and there and there and there. When are we going to discipline them? This is your fault. Your fault. So then the child learns that this is how you deal with situations like that. The children want to play. So play with them. But obviously discipline them. And when you discipline them, discipline them with care. You know, some of us when we get angry, we discipline our children because of our emotions, our anger. Not because we want the best out of them. We do want the best out of them. But sometimes we discipline them out of anger, out of emotion, out of frustration and stress. When we discipline them, my dear brothers and sisters, be careful and patient, inshaAllah ta'ala, in the way you discipline them. Because they will grow up thinking this is how they should deal with the situation. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us understanding. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the best of parents. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our children among the righteous and the most obedient and dutiful towards their elders and towards their children. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the people of Jannah and to unite our children and our families together in Jannah to unite us with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best teacher, the best parent.